Fraser, take one. <laughs> the question is, how do you get big name talent in a film without paying much money? How do you do that? Sex. You have an idea that is commercial, that has a star and a hook. Okay. That's it. Tell me some more. So you start with that idea and you pitch it to people and have money. And you say, I've got a star attached to this. He wants to do it. You go to the star and you say, I've got the money attached to this. And then they both believe that they both have the money, or one has, one has the other when maybe you don't. And then what happens is they wind up believing in what you've got, and it all happens. That's it. And your camera just dropped. And that's it. That's what I was taught. Um, what? Oh. What are those famous movies that you've made? <laughs> I heard I mean, you made you were, you were the, the Battles um, of Tim Iman. Yeah, <laughs> that was a great movie. I like that movie a lot. That was an excellent movie. What was that movie about? It's about it's about the minutia of politics, in regards to initiative and referendum projects. People are putting those are the signature gatherings in the okay. grassroots signature gathering to change laws in the state of Washington to lower taxes. And the one guy that's been out there in the, here in the Northwest is real provocative as, and notorious as Tim Iman. So, that's it. And, and how did you get the idea to make that movie? Um, I got it, the idea to do it simply by from uh, taking a class from Stanley Kramer. I was only 16 at the time, but I always remember the thought that he gave me. And that was, look in the newspaper, like you brought the newspaper, that's what this camera's sitting on, balance. Okay. And you look in there, and, you, and if you need an idea for a movie, look in there and see what's in there, and you will have your star, or your hook, yeah, yeah, and yeah. your star, all in the, well, maybe not your star, but you know, this had it all rolled in one, because you got Tim Iman, right. and your hook. Right. <laughs> and that's how you do it, that's how you make a movie. That's it. That's very cool. Have you ever told your, your professor? That, that you took his idea and, and, and actually turned it into something? No. It's kind of cool to but, let him know that. But no, he's he's long, long, he's gone. Oh, he's he gone. was old when I met met him when I was just a you know, young kid. Okay. But, but that's how you did it. And I tried, I've tried lots of other things and they didn't really work you know, as far as being commercial and making any, any money back at all. What'd you try? A lot of art films. Mm -hmm. They teach you technique. But if you do what I'm talking about and apply that art artistry to what I'm talking about, you'll have something you can sell. And you'll wind up on Netflix and Amazon and all these other places. And you'll get you'll have some success. If it's any good at all. <laughs> so, Very good. Yeah. And that's it, that's the trick to movie making. What was the what was the most fun about making that movie? What did you enjoy most? Um I love finding out that People that are radio personalities, people are famous. If they really want to do something, the money doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. It's really about what's. They do it. They'll do things because they want to do things, and you find that out. A lot of times, that's the case. It's not because they did it for money. Very cool. They did it because. And that's why people were in your movie because they believed. They in what wanted to be in it. They believed in that. Believe that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's what makes that different. And that's really amazing. That was the most amazing thing I found out. And has your um, publicity, and now that you're famous, has that changed your life much? Oh, dramatically, dramatically. It's really changed a lot. You know? Very cool, man. And what's your, what's your next film going to be? I can't fight them off. There's fans. But they're everywhere. Um, well, I'm just looking for um, I'm looking for what they call a property. I have ideas in mind. I have a book in mind of the alphabet of manliness. The alphabet of so manliness? That's one idea for a movie I thought about making. Oh, I like that. It's a book that's it, it's already been successful on uh, Amazon. Okay. And it's out. It was at one point a, a national best bestseller. 
and I thought it was very funny. And it was made by a guy who was a complete nut. And um, it's, a, it's basically a movie, or it would be a movie about how, how to be a real man. And, and what real man men would eat. That's like, like a fantastic idea. Yeah, like beef jerky is real man food. Yes, yes. You know, and uh, Conan, and uh, Chuck Norris yeah, yeah, yeah. is the is the god that you pray to basically, and he lives in a mountain, and you know, with seagulls and stuff flying around. And so basically, you just he, you know, he shits lightning bolts, and he uh, and he eats eats, uh, you know. Uh, well, he eats gunpowder, you know, that sort of stuff. <laughs> and he's really, you know, this this book takes you from A to Z to so you can see how to be a real man. Was it expensive for you to get Chuck Norris to be in your movie? Well, you don't have to do that, but I think he'll be in it. That's I, cool. I, I don't think there will be a problem. But you have heard, like, the isms about Chuck Norris, you know, that one. Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. When he does, a, when he pushes down, the earth pushes down. When he pushes, <laughs> no, I haven't heard of that. No, so that's, that's great. That's that kind of joke, and that's what that book's filled with. So, well, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, it's a book on how to be a real man because I don't think anybody has real role models anymore, and I think this move, this book, you know, epitomizes what has been lost in our culture and makes fun of it too. So, it's really fun. So. Well, if, if I can ask you a question, if you could answer. If you could answer in one word, what, what what would you say the battles of Paul Fraser are? Um, staying, what, or what are the main battles of Paul staying Fraser? Staying true to oneself. Yeah. Um, all, don't don't let don't let side, don't let go of your dreams. Always follow your dreams and and follow them. Follow your heart. That's the battles. That's no, the eternal that's battles. Good. And I think well, everybody experiences that. Yeah. So that's it. Do what you good. love. Don't get sidetracked. And that kind of thing. Keep your focus. So. And what advice would you give to um, young filmmakers that would like to uh, uh, achieve, you know, the success that you've had in getting your first film, you know, full-length movie together, which is really quite an achievement. What would you say to kids that, that are that are thinking about that? Go out, do it. Uh, don't wait for school. Don't wait to go to school. Just do it. Just uh, be, it's never been better than ever to have access to the equipment. And go find people who are good at the craft that you look up to and continue to ask them questions and network with them, the people that are really good at it. Don't waste time with the other people so much. That's fine to be with your friends, but just go off like I did. I took a class from Stanley Kramer. That's a good idea. Take it from the people who know what they're talking about and do that. And model yourself after the ones you respect and then grow from there. And then from there, develop your own style. Start with the basics and then... Do the basic classical style filmmaking, then develop your own style from there. That's a good way to go. That's it. Very good. That's yeah. cool. Go and, and ask people to know what they're doing. And stay open, too. Okay. And what would your advice be to some to very old people who are sick and in the hospital and in an old age home and are, have illness and have very... I don't know family. because I'm not them, but... And, but they want to—they want to start their own movie, make their own movie. Well, what advice would you give to them? Same thing. Same advice. Okay. okay. Yep. Well, very good. Yeah. And don't lose. And just don't—don't don't look at your age as a prohibiting factor because Clint Eastwood is really old. There you go. That's right. He's an old, old, crusty old man. Yes, yes. And even Kramer was old too when I met him, and and he. <laughs> He had fallen way out of style, but that didn't prevent him from continuing on and continue to teach filmmaking and continue to do it. So don't don't just just because of your age, that doesn't mean anything because um, you have some offer too that someone else can't. So stay true to your heart. Don't just find your own style. And, uh, so, well, yeah. thanks, Paul. Thanks for yeah, um, no. Just age doesn't matter. In fact, a lot of a lot of young people need older people around anyway. Yes. Help guide them. They don't. That's actually a, uh, an asset. So, because they go through things in their life, and you're going to be around them, you're going to get to know them really well. So they need your advice on how to handle those things. So that's actually a good thing, and you can be encouraging. So that's it. Yeah. So just be a big sweetheart that way. So it'll work out. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. So that was an interview <laughs> with Paul Fraser. <laughs>
He is a filmmaker extraordinaire. And his uh, new film is the, not new film, his film out was The Battles of Tim Eyman. <laughs>